This is the Stephen A. Smith Show Podcast. I'm Stephen A. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the latest edition of the Stephen A. Smith Show, coming at you as I love to do over the airwaves of ESPN Radio every weekday in 250-plus markets across the United States of America. And, of course, nationwide on ESPN Radio, Sirius XM style, Channel 80. Number to call up, as always, is 888-729-3776. That's 888 888- Say ESPN. You can also catch me on Twitter at Stephen A. Smith on Facebook at Stephen A. So feel free. Holler at me anytime you want to. Got a lot of stuff to get into. I am coming at you live from Los Angeles, California, the city of angels, palm trees, Venice Beach, Rodeo Drive and everything in between. And I can't be happier. It's the first time I've been in warm weather in over a month. I feel good. I feel good. And let me tell you something else right now. I'll tell you who might, might, might not be feeling so good. That might be the Los Angeles Lakers. Because when I watched the Cleveland Cavaliers last night, and I look at Jordan Clarkson and Lance Larry Nance Jr. playing ball the way that they're playing ball, I know that Magic Johnson and the Los Angeles Lakers cleared damn near $70 million in cap space so they're in position to go after two max players. But I'm here to tell y'all, ladies and gentlemen, right now, they better get somebody. It only matters if you end up getting somebody. Because if you didn't get anybody and you gave up two 25-year-olds that's capable of producing, particularly when they're playing with a star like LeBron James, I got to tell you something. That's going to pinch you a little bit. It's going to hurt. It's going to hurt to watch. Not that Magic Johnson and Rob Palenka didn't do an outstanding job, because they did. But I'm just saying, Larry Nance Jr. can play. Jordan Clarkson can play. And it is time to really, really engage in a healthy conversation about what potentially may take place before our very eyes. It's just two games. A lot of people talk about there's nothing to get too excited about. I don't look at it that way. I don't view things that way. I know basketball. I know talent when I see it. I know when talent is gelling. And I'm saying, if you look at the Cleveland Cavaliers, clearly J.R. Smith is playing out of his mind. He's hit 20 of his last 34 three-point shots. In his last five games alone, one game he shot about 85%, another game he shot about 66%, a couple of games he shot about 50%. J.R. Smith over the last five games has been flat out balling. The shot has been falling. Is it going to continue to do so at the clip that it's doing so now? No, but it doesn't necessarily have to. The key thing where J.R. Smith is concerned is that is he going to be a formidable threat because he's making his share of shots? If that answer is yes, where does that leave you? Because I got news for you. Looking at LeBron James, the best player in the world unquestionably, balling the way that he's balling this year, understanding that this four-game winning streak that the Cleveland Cavaliers are on, has been without the services of Kevin Love. Looking at a guy like Larry Nance Jr., which L.A. is more than familiar with, where you got a guy that literally is not just about his athleticism, it's not just about his ability to defend and to be a substantive acquisition on your front court. It's also that guy that can step out and defend on the perimeter in pick-and-roll situations. Who doesn't force your defense to the collapse? Who doesn't compromise you on the defensive end of the floor? And if you look at it from that perspective, the fact that he can defend like that and Clarkson can suddenly create his own shot, and as a result, that takes pressure off LeBron, which takes pressure off of J.R. Smith. And you look at it from that perspective, Cleveland is something to look forward to. I'm at the, I'm of the mindset right now, they'll cakewalk through the East. Because when you add three 25-year-olds and an experienced point guard like George Hill, who's known as being a quality defender against opposing point guards, not to mention somebody capable of hitting three-point shots of his own. When you have that at your disposal, when you have that available to you, you have upgraded exponentially. And if you've done that, how are we to look at the rest of the East? In Boston, Kyrie doesn't, I mean, they don't have any depth. I love Jason Tatum, who some would argue the Lakers should have drafted. You look at Jalen Brown, he can ball. You look at Al Horford, you can't ignore him. 
You look at the Terry Rogers, the Marcus Smarts of the world, the Aaron Baines of the world coming off the bench, they can't be ignored. But Boston doesn't really have depth. Toronto with DeRozan and Kyle Lowry, you don't know whether you can trust them. The Washington Wizards got emotional issues where, you know, Wall is out, they're playing better without Wall, but they're throwing shade on, at him on Twitter, even though he's their $175 million player that's destined to come back before March is over. You got the Miami Heat happy to have Dwayne Wade back. Bunch of young Lions that don't mind competing against anybody, but not having Deion Wade this has not helped them. And you got guys that struggle to make perimeter shots. Who's going to stand in the way of the Cavs? The Cavs are going, if they cakewalk last year through the Eastern Conference, why wouldn't they do it this year? Because Kyrie's in Boston, that's all you got. That ain't good enough. That ain't good enough. So now we come out west. And looking out west, it's supposed to be all about Golden State. But here's the flip side to all of that. It might be all about Golden State. But Houston can't be ignored. James Harden is unquestionably the MVP. CP3 is an MVP candidate. You look at the San Antonio Spurs despite losing last night. They played this entire season practically without Kawhi Leonard. What about when he comes back? You got OKC, they lost last night and have no bench to speak of as far as I'm concerned, which is a problem. But they still got a big three capable of exploding. And if your bench could give you some quality minutes just to rest those dudes, you're in good hands. But the Warriors are still expected to come out of the, the West. And I'm looking at it from Cleveland's perspective. If you can defend. If you can neutralize to some degree, if you can prevent a team from dropping 120 on you. See, this is the difference between me and all these analytic dudes reading stuff all the damn time. I read the analytics too. I've been doing it for years, but I don't depend on it, especially come playoff time. Because the difference, you can study analytic sheets all day, all night long, like, like, like all of these dudes do in this day and age. You can do that. And you're not wrong because it's strictly by the numbers. Regular season, 82 games, taking nights off, back-to-backs. And, oh, by the way, even when there's no back-to-back, you don't know what dudes are doing on their off days because regular season games are not prioritized to the degree that postseason games are prioritized. So don't think that guys don't go out there and have a good time and play and party and do all of that stuff to compromise them being from 100% until it's time. Analytics don't take that into consideration. I do. I think about the preparation. I think about the off days you have an opportunity to to, to prepare. And I understand that analytics are going to get their behinds waxed come postseason time. Because all of that's going to get thrown out of the window. That's my belief. And what it comes down to for me is that here's all you want. Here's how you analyze Cleveland and what they've done. It's what New York should think about. It's what the Lakers should think about. It's what every team in between should think about. Here's what it comes down to, ladies and gentlemen. In the sport of basketball, not football, not baseball, where you're at the mercy of teammates because you're helpless to do but so much. In the sport of basketball, here's the bottom line. Do you have a team that can keep it close enough where the final three minutes of a game comes down to the wire? If the answer for Cleveland is yes, don't you then ask Superman to put on his cape and say, here it is. Take me to the promised land. Don't you get to do that? I think that's what you want. And if that's the case, I got news for you. The whole NBA playoff picture has just become very, very interesting. I still think the Eastern Conference is a cakewalk. The West isn't. And the finals probably won't be either. And that's really all we can ask for, particularly as All-Star Weekend approaches, isn't it? I think so. What about you? 
Triple Eight. Say ESPN. That's the number to call up. That's 888-729-3776. More of your phone calls coming up in a minute. Brian Wintos, our NBA uh, analyst and reporter extraordinaire. He'll be on the show with us a little bit later on. Looking forward to talking to him as well. Plus, I'm going to get into some stuff, some NFL stuff. New coaches in New York and Philadelphia. Dallas Cowboys making news for all the wrong reasons yet again. That stuff and more is definitely something I want to talk about. Plus, I want to get into... TNT segment last night, Baron Davis, Isaiah Thomas, the Isaiah Thomas, the Hall of Famer, not the one in the Lakers right now. Chris Webber and Shaquille O'Neal had a conversation last night that I found very, very interesting. We'll be talking about that and so much more in a minute. Stick around. You're listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. I just saved hundreds of dollars by switching to Geico. I feel like I'm on top of the world. Disclaimer, you will not be transported to the top of the world. In the unlikely event you find yourself at the Arctic Circle, seek shelter from the elements immediately to avoid frostbite and or hypothermia. Geico will not be responsible if you find yourself in a cave or crevasse with a lonely abominable snowman, who in all likelihood will force you to play games including, but not limited to, Go Fish, Charades, Chinese Checkers, or his personal favorite, Red Rover, Red Rover, Send Yeti on over. Geico is not liable for any damages, either physical or emotional. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. It's interesting that this song is playing right now. And it's not just because it's Valentine's Day, a day of love. An opportunity for you, the fellas out there, to touch the life of that special someone who means so much to you, touches your heart. It's not just because of that. It's because Keith Sweat is the one singing this song. It's because I have a book in front of me. Make it last forever. The do's and don'ts, according to Keith Sweat, that was left here in the L.A. studios for me by Mr. Keyshawn Johnson. I don't even know how to take that. I don't even know how to take that. Keyshawn and his crazy self. Love Doc's going to pay a last visit. Approximately two fifty, uh, you know, 15 minutes past hour number two. Back here on the Stephen A. Smith Show. ESPN Radio Plus. Top two o'clock hour, Brian Windhorse will come on beforehand, not that he needs to precede a Love Doctor segment. Uh, but then again, he is a special teddy bear to somebody. We do know this about Brian Wintos, happily married man. Welcome back to Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio, Triple Eight. Say ESPN, that's the number to call up. This is 888-729-3776. No calls are up on the screen. I need my help from my producers to show me what calls are up here because my, my screen is frozen, so I can't see who's on the line with us right now. Cat, who do we have on the line? Chris in L.A., you're live with Stephen A. Let's go with it. What's up? Chris, are you there? Bye, Chris. Who else do we have, Cat? Roscoe in Orlando, you're live with Stephen A. What's up? Hey, what's going on, Stephen A.? What's going hey, on, man? Talk uh, to me. Uh, real quick, man, I want people to understand, like, I'm a long-time LeBron fan, okay? Okay. And what just happened was epic. And they're ignoring the fact that because it's been two games, that the talent that they just surround him with, these guys are hungry. And I'm telling you, they're going to be a force to be reckoned with. So you tell everybody, they better watch out. I promise you that. You know, listen, here's the thing. The Golden State Warriors are no joke. They they are the creme de la creme. Everybody is aiming for them. We understand that. But I think the important point to recognize is that we got to dissect what we're seeing here. Larry Nance Jr. is an athletic front court player who rebounds, who defends, and he doesn't just defend in the interior. He defends on the perimeter. That's a very, very big deal. Jordan Clarkson is a guy who's never needed anybody to help him get his shot off. That's a very, very big deal. The fact that they're both accustomed to playing together is why Tyron Lue has them on the court together. That's a very, very big deal. The fact that their chemistry has instantly become contagious to the point where LeBron and J.R. Smith and Jeff Green is feeding off of it. That's a very big deal. Last night, Against Oklahoma City with Steven Adams in a minute recording in the middle recording 22 points and 17 rebounds. The Cavaliers had LeBron James, Jeff Green, Larry Nance Jr., J.R. Smith, 
and Jordan Clarkson on the court together. And Oklahoma City couldn't hang with them. That's a very big deal. That's a very big deal. And oh, by the way, while they're in the midst of this losing, in this winning streak, they haven't even had their second best player, which is Kevin Love. You, Man. this is not, this is not something that can be dismissed. The Cleveland Cavaliers, I believe, will coax through the Easter Conference. They will coast through the Easter Conference. And what they will do out West, if they're capable of defending and keeping games close, then it comes down to Golden State's ability to stop LeBron. And good luck with that. That's how I'm looking at this, Roscoe. Thanks for the call, Stephen. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Who else do we have, Cat? Des in Pennsylvania, you're live with Stephen A. What's up? Hey, good afternoon, Stephen A. How you doing today? Talk to me, man. All right, Dan. Uh, I just want to make a comment on the Cavaliers. Uh, I believe they, they had a good team uh, the, the last round, but now they had dismembered it. They got a pretty good team this round as well. But I just hope that if time comes to crunch, that Superman can put on his cape. We always we always try to uh, compare him to Jordan. Like Jordan took over the team if the team was stumbling. You know he'll make a run for it. I hope LeBron, LeBron can do the same thing. Well, we got to find out. What I what, what it's my hope. See, this is what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping for an epic battle that ultimately and see guys like Max Kellerman and others act like this is impossible, but in the game of basketball, it is. It is entirely possible that even though Kevin Durant has guys, elite individuals to help him out, or Steph Curry has elite individuals to help him out, et cetera, et cetera. And that's not necessarily the case with LeBron James. It is entirely possible that the game could be so tight that you're Tyron Lue and you're perfectly in position to say, here's the ball, LeBron, take us there. That's what I want to see. I want to see that guy. I want to see that guy who takes over where it's like it's a one man wrecking crew and it's close. And guess what? Go to state. You got to stop him or Cleveland. You got to stop Kevin Durant or you got to stop James Harden. That's what I want to see because it's those moments that define the greatness that we allude to so often. It's what I'm starving for, Des. That's what I wish for. That's what I'm craving for. And that's what I believe we all deserve. How about you? That's right. That's what I want to see. Last year they had Kyrie Irving, but this time they don't have him. So we got to go to somebody else. No, LeBron, step it up. There you go. Thank you for the call. Appreciate you, man. Thank you so much. Triple Eight, say ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. We'll continue discussing this. Plus, we'll get into LeBron and, and whether or not he deserves Strong, strong, strong league MVP consideration. I'll tell you what I think and why, plus a little something extra in just a minute. You're listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it! Looking back, all of these years, I shed some tears. Told myself time and time again, I'm going to win. This is beautiful. It's Teddy, Teddy Prendergrass. Y'all wouldn't know about this. You young whippersnappers out there, would you? Start all over again. Think I better let it go. Kick that music, cat. Looks like another love TKO. Whoa. Think I better let it go. Valentine's Day with Stephen A. Love. Right here on ESPN Radio, you young whippersnappers out there wouldn't know anything about Teddy, would you? Would you? So much to learn. But you got time. You got time. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Protecting your small business is a big deal. Cover what you've worked so hard for. Visit ProgressiveCommercial.com. Got a little uh, nephew of mine, Corey. Corey Bang, he's out there. You know, he's uh want to call into the radio show. You know. Tell y'all how to love Dr. Helped him out. 
I want him to talk to y'all about that. Educate y'all in case y'all slept on a love doctor. He's scheduled to make a visit. Love doctor scheduled to make a visit. 15 minutes past hour number two. My nephew Corey might call in after that. Just want to let y'all know. Just want to let y'all know. Until then, we'll get back to the phones right here. Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. Before I do, by the way, let me say this. <sighs> LeBron James is the best player in the world. LeBron James, superstar extraordinaire. Um, There's no talent in the NBA as formidable as him. It's undeniable. Having said all of that, LeBron James does not deserve league MVP honors. I don't give a damn what anybody says. A couple of things to point out. Number one, the best player in the world usually does not win league MVP honors. There's plenty of times Jordan didn't win it. There's plenty of times Shaquille O'Neal didn't win it. It happens. You got to deal with that. That's just the reality. And there's no way around that. We can slice it any way we want to. But that's reality. That's number one. But number two, and more importantly, whereas we fully recognize that LeBron James numbers wise brings what he brings to the table and LeBron James numbers wise continues to prove he's the best in the world because of his all around brilliance and his greatness, etc. Ladies and gentlemen, LeBron James does not get a pass for what happened in Cleveland over the first 50 games of this season. Kyrie Irving won it out. J.R. Smith and Jamie Crowder came on the team. They departed with friction. They departed feeling a bit salty. In between, there was a relationship with Dwayne Wade that compromised the other relationships that LeBron James had on this team. As a result, they weren't a good team in terms of chemistry. They weren't a good team in terms of offense on the floor. They weren't a good team defensively at all. They were one of the top, the the, the bottom three in the game. And rookie GM Kobe Altman pulls off an incredible deadline trade that brings four new players to the squad. And by the way, I don't mention enough about Rodney Hood, who's only six feet eight and shooting three pointers for a 39% rate. We can't ignore all of those things. So let me tell y'all something right now that's very, very important for you to understand. Where is you're the best player in the world? Considering the struggles that the Cleveland Cavaliers had. If anybody deserves MVP consideration, it's Kobe Altman. Because if he didn't make that deal, what would we be saying about LeBron? As far as I'm concerned, I don't want any excuses to get in the way of James Harden being stripped of league MVP honors this year. Because right now, if the vote was today, he is clearly the league MVP. Period. And by the way, my rookie of the year is Donovan Mitchell out of Utah. It ain't Ben Simmons out of Philly. It ain't Jason Tatum out of Boston. Boston. It's Donovan Mitchell in Utah. The brother special. He's leading the team in scoring. He's their go-to player, and he's a rookie. I don't want to hear it. They won 10 straight. They're a game over 500. They're a game and a half out of the playoff spot. This is after losing Gordon Haywood. Because Donovan Mitchell can ball. Period. He's a closer. And he's a rookie. Lakers could have had him. Now you had Jordan Clarkson. They could have had Malik Monk too. Oh, you had Contavious Caldwell Pope. Could have had Dennis Smith Jr. Same reasons why you didn't. Could have had marking it. Now you had Larry Nance Jr. and Brandon Ingram. Could have had De'Aaron Fox, who dropped 39 on Lonzo Ball in the NCAA tournament when he was playing at UCLA. Now you, you, you had to get Lonzo. Hmm. Okay. I'm not black. I'm OJ. Okay, <laughs> back to the phones we go. Let's go to Sean in Inglewood. You're live with Stephen A. Talk to me, Sean. Well, well first of all, uh, uh, Stephen A. Smith, last yesterday you were totally correct. I shouldn't have been talking about the scrutiny of LeBron. Uh, but I'm going to give you a new uh, subject here. The Warriors 
will not make it to the final. I don't believe that we'll make it to the finals this year because uh, uh, Draymond Green is starting to uh, get a little chippy with the refs, which has been a problem. Uh, the coaching, uh, you know, is starting to boil up there where they're getting tired of, you know, all the, uh, you know, going back and forth. They're getting real fatigued. The only person that's probably still real hungry is uh, Kevin Durant because he, he wants his second one. And then uh, you got the Houston over there that's just balling. Have, uh, the, have the uh, Warriors beat them yet this year? Have they beat the I'm, Thunder yet this year? I mean, I, I just don't get it. And then you got the revamped Cleveland Cavaliers that are looking stupendous over there. I just need your are opinion you on really, that. Are you really going to spend so much emphasis on the regular season? Are you really going to do that? When it comes to a team like the Warriors, are you really going to do that? Seriously? I, I mean, hey, sometimes fatigue, you know, it, it, it boils over the season. How about I mean, interest? You, How about interest? How about the fact that you just ain't that interested because it ain't just that important? How about that? that, that, that is, That's I something mean, I, that I, I don't I, think I really, I, really, I really wouldn't want to see another uh, Warrior uh, Cavalier uh, saga continue. I mean, you can only put the uh, the uh, TV on repeat so many times. Okay. I hear you talking. I'll be here. I'll be here when you realize that's a non-issue when you call back later. Take it easy. Triple eight, say ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. We'll continue talking about this before we get into some football talk in hour number two as well. Stick around. It's the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. By the way, Zeeper, you've heard of Zeeper, haven't you? It's a company that you can trust and has been around for many years. I personally met the CEO, Dr. Greenberg. And by the way, guess who uses Zeeper? That would happen to be me. Some of you are still snoring because you don't think it's a big enough problem to solve right now. But let me tell you something. Until you get your snoring problem solved, you'll never know how good it feels to sleep without snoring. Here's what you need to do. You need to see for yourself why so many people are using Zipa. Just go to their website at Zipa.com. If you're driving, be safe and visit the Zipa.com website later. Just remember Zipa, Z-Y-P-P-A-H, is happy Z spelled backwards. You'll hear all this talk about Zipa on our show because guess what? It really helps you sleep better. And that means it helps you feel better. And if you have someone you're sleeping next to, they'll appreciate you for getting Zebra as well. So take a minute and visit the Zebra website or download Zebra app and learn why putting an end to snoring is one of the best things you can possibly do for your health. That's Zebra, Z Y P P A H. It's Happy Z spelled backwards. You heard me. It's the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it! Back to the phones we go. Let's go to Kyle in Cleveland. You're live with Stephen A. Talk to me. Stephen A., big fan, first-time caller. Thank you. Go ahead, buddy. Uh, I just wanted to ask you what you thought of uh, LeBron seeming to take some nights off during the regular season. I mean, I grew up watching the Bulls and all their amazing teams in the 90s and i don't remember jordan and pippen ever doing that well listen I, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna be too hard on lebron in that regard here's here's the thing when you have to carry such a heavy load on both ends of the floor uh michael jordan never had to do that but so much as much as of elite defender as he was it did help that he had pippen and rodman and the three-headed monster and the game was considerably different than it was in this day and age the three-point shooting uh wasn't as formidable back in the day there was a level of physicality that you could employ that you can't now all of those things come into consideration if you want to knock lebron on the defensive side of the ball here's what you can say somebody like Kawhi leonard comes out on the court and from open and tap He is defending the opposing team's elite offensive player. LeBron James doesn't do that. LeBron James does that in spots. He does that plays here and there in the fourth quarter or something along those lines. He doesn't come out front and center. He doesn't come out like, I got this guy. There ain't no way in hell I'm going for that. He he doesn't do that. That much you can say. Well, do you think it affects the intensity in the regular season then? Sometimes, kind of- sometimes, but but again, he has to carry a heavier load. And at the end of the day, here's what LeBron has has learned and has earned the right to feel. LeBron is held accountable, truly, truly held accountable for what transpires in April, May, and June. We talk because he's relevant and he's newsworthy and we can't ignore him. But in terms of real, true accountability, LeBron James has earned the right not to be judged in terms of his on-court performance. You can judge his leadership. 
You can judge uh, how he leads his troops. You can judge whether or not he's allowed things to be a distraction. But in terms of his on-court performance, LeBron James has graduated to the point where he's earned the right for us not to judge him harshly between the months of November through mid- mid-April. All right, one more He quick is held question. accountable for April, May, and June, and we all know that. So if, if, he was, if he was the eighth seed in the East at the end of the year, does that make that big of a difference since he doesn't try as hard in the it playoffs, make do you that, think? It doesn't make that bit of a difference because he doesn't need home court advantage to win, but I would say to you that's an unfair question to LeBron James uh, because the Cleveland Cavaliers ain't going to be in the eighth seed. That's just unrealistic. But I appreciate the call. Thank you so much. Stephen A. Smith show being brought to you by Penzoil Synthetics, taking synthetic motor oil performance to a whole new level. Make the switch to Penzoil Synthetics today. Remember, Brian Windows, NBA in, insider and analyst. He'll be on the show with us. Very, very few people know LeBron James better than him, so make sure you stick around. Uh, listen to Brian Windhorst. Let's go to Jason in Brooklyn. You're live with Stephen A. Go ahead, Brit. Jay. Go ahead, Jason. What's up, Stephen? How you doing? I'm Happy good. Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Go ahead. Um, I just want to talk about the state of the Knicks. Um, I feel like Hornacek should give Michael Beasley the red carpet. Um, he hasn't complained all year. He hasn't been a player getting technical fouls. Um, I feel like if, if let me stop you right there. Out, let me stop you right there, Jason. You called up here to talk about Michael Beasley. No, I actually wanted to talk about if anybody believes that J.R. Smith is going to shoot seventy percent for Nobody the rest of the year. That. Nobody. Let me ask church. you a question. That's a silly question. Who's ever shot seventy percent in history? Well, he shot so far for the last two games. I know I that, but whoever that, believes that somebody has shot seventy percent for the year, who does? I heard that? what's his name this morning, Max. It was so hyped that. He was shooting so good, and I'm like, come on, guys. It's not going to work like this. Um, excuse games, me. Excuse gonna- me. Be quiet. Stop. Max Kellerman did not say that. Max Kellerman exactly, said exactly what you're saying. Max Kellerman said there's no way he will continue to shoot the way that he has shot. You misquoted and misrepresented his position. Max Kellerman said no such thing. I thought Max was going in about you thought him wrong. saying that. They- you thought wrong. He never said that. He said he's shooting well now. I was the one highlighting what he's done for the last five games. And we both acknowledged it won't continue. But the point is, if J.R. Smith shot 40%, 40% from three-point range for the rest of the year, that would be a huge plus for Cleveland. That's how much and how desperately needed his shot is. All right, Rodney Hood is shooting 39% from three-point range. And he's 6'8 and a capable defender at that. So you look at all of those things, it can't be ignored. And that's why you prop it up and you say there's a chance. Because, again, if they can be competitive enough to defend, then the game could come down the wire with the ball in LeBron's hands. And who don't want to see that? That night. Say what? Series. The Celtics will take them in a seven-game series. The Celtics will take Cleveland? Yep. Well, here's the beauty of it. Where's here's the beauty of it, Jason? Show ain't going nowhere. Neither am I. I'll be here when you're wrong. Feel free to call back. Take it easy. Have a good day. I boy, I would be happy if Boston won. Boy, I would be happy if Kyrie Irving put on an absolute show. My question about Boston is their depth. I got serious question marks and problems with their depth. That's what I'm worried about. And because of their absence of depth. I think that it's damn near possible that Cleveland will cakewalk through the Eastern Conference playoffs. Because I just think they've got too many fresh bodies to to tax LeBron James. And in the end, he'll be too much for anybody in the East to overcome. But we'll continue talking about that next with my man Brian Wintos. Plus, the Love Doctor's coming up in hour number two. Stick around. Don't touch that dollar. Stephen A. ESPN Radio. That's just a sample of what you'll hear on the Stephen A. Smith Show. Weekdays at 1 p.m. Eastern on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. This this is the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. I'm Stephen A. From now hour number two. The Stephen A. Smith Show here with you on ESPN Radio, 250 plus markets throughout the United States of America. And of course, ESPN Radio, Sirius XM style channel lady. Number to call up as always is 888-ESPN. That's 888-729-3776. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive's Home Insurance. Get your quote at Progressive.com today. Looking at the screen right now, 
Rockets on a nine-game winning streak. James Harden clearly the MVP front runner. There is no doubt about that, but there are interesting and compelling NBA storylines all over the place, and who better to talk to about it than my buddy, NBA reporter and analyst and insider, the one and only Brian Windhorse. He should be on the line with us right now. Brian, are you there? Yes, Stephen A. Hello. How are you, buddy? How's everything? Good. We saw each other for two seconds about right. two hours ago. I, I, I have to. I, I, you know, I have to put you on the spot. Uh, uh, you are married. Is that not correct? That's right. It's Valentine's Day, right? That's right. All right. How is it? Because I'm not married. I wouldn't know this. How is it for a married man to be working on Valentine's Day, particularly if you have to be on the road as opposed to home? Is that a good day for you, sir? Are you ready for the answer? Yes, I am. The answer is my wife is in Los Angeles with me right now. Excuse me. That's why he's Brian Wintos. <laughs> That's why he's Brian Wintos, ladies and gentlemen. Right here with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. Big Mac Daddy, I hear you, bro. I hear you. Let's get let's, let's get into some NBA stuff right here. This trade that that Kobe Altman pulled off. I don't want to hear stuff about LeBron being the MVP. As far as I'm concerned, Kobe Altman might be the MVP with the with the heist he pulled off. Not really a heist, but you know what I'm saying. How do you feel watching the Cavaliers over the three games they've played since this trade has taken place? All right, a couple levels here. First off, they made a, more than just the trades for the players. They traded for and engaged LeBron James back, which is the biggest acquisition that they made. And you want the, the, where where the line goes. Before last Wednesday's game against the Timberwolves at home, they're playing on a back-to-back. They'd lost eight straight games on national television. The Wolves had a couple of days off. LeBron comes out, has a triple-double. They told him before the game, LeBron, we're going to make some trades tomorrow. Since that happened forward, LeBron's averaging 30 points, 13 assists, nine rebounds, shooting 55%. That was what they needed. They needed to get LeBron reengaged. Secondly, you know, Kobe, and in my mind, fairly, it may not have all been his fault, but he was sitting in the chair. He wasn't able to execute a couple of different Paul George trades last summer. Now, maybe it wasn't his fault. Maybe it was the fact that he was interim. Maybe it was the fact that another team pulled out. Maybe it was just all kinds of other details. Or that, LeBron, would, or that LeBron wouldn't commit to staying, which is what Dan Gilbert wanted him to do. That had something to do with it, too. For sure. There were a lot of things. But at the end of the day, he wasn't able to execute a Paul George trade, and the trade that he made wasn't looking so good. So for him to come out and be able to execute these trades under pressure, and I think they these are pretty secretly hedging trades. Not only did the Cavs get better today, but they got younger and they got and they kept the Brooklyn pick so that they'll still add another piece so that it's even LeBron even if LeBron walks away this summer. Now certainly this team's not going to be a competitor with these guys, but at least they have a basis of players to rebuild to start a rebuild with. Had they made a trade for a guy like DeAndre Jordan, who's in the last year of his contract, who might have walked away, or older players that they couldn't use, he was able to sort of hedge it's a really artful hedge, but he hedged with these deals, regardless of what LeBron does this summer. Mm. Brian Winters right here with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. So seeing what you have seen, what do you think about the Cleveland Cavaliers now compared to what you were witnessing last week? I think they've got a, a, a decent chance to win the East. And a, a week ago, I thought they would have struggled to get out of the second. Because right a now, decent chance. I kind of think it's going to be a cakewalk, Brian, to believe it or not, because I think that the young fresh legs gives them the depth that they need and elevates them defensively. I don't know who can deal with them in the East. Well, I do think that you're right, that if you look at this team over the last four years, they kept getting older and older and older with all their moves. Last night, when they went down the stretch of the game to win that game, they had three 25-year-olds on the court. LeBron hasn't shared the court in the fourth quarter with three 25-year-olds like in like eight or ten years. I'm not even kidding. So they definitely got younger. But I, let's not overreact to two games. And also, I think we we owe some respect to the Toronto Raptors, who are playing not only tremendous basketball, but they're 24-4 and four at home, and they're in position to get the number one seed. And the Cavs will potentially have to start a series with the Celtics on the road with young players and a series with the Raptors on the road. So I think they've got a good chance. Uh, but, you know, they're going to have to reintegrate Kevin Love in about a month or so here. So let's... Let's see how things go. I'm not ready to hand it back to him just yet. You know, but an interesting part, and we're talking to Brian Winters right here with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio, watching them last night against Oklahoma City. I'm thinking about the fact that on the court was LeBron James, Jeff Green, Larry Nance Jr., Jordan Clarkson, 
and J.R. Smith. Now, obviously, J.R. Smith ain't going to continue to shoot the way that he's been shooting, but it's a credit to him that he's been shooting as well as he's been shooting. They look faster on defense. You got Larry Nance being able to defend in the pick and roll situations on the perimeter. I think ultimately their defense is elevated, and that's why I'm excited about what I'm seeing from them. Combine that with Boston's lack of depth, Toronto with DeRozan and Larry not proving themselves in the postseason, and the rest of the Eastern Conference being so highly questionable. I'm not saying that the Cavs have the East on lock because they're so great. I'm saying it's virtually by default because no one is really that, that good come postseason time. To that you say what, Brian? I say LeBron's not going to lose sleep about going to Boston or Toronto. You're right. And even though I don't want to make too much of a game in February, the Cavs blowing uh, Boston out the other day had a lot of currency for them because they know if they have to start a series in Boston in the second round, they're not going to be afraid to go into that building. And LeBron's not afraid of the Raptors. He's owned them in the playoffs the last two years, even though the teams have changed dramatically. So I agree with that. But I still say the most important thing is, is an engaged LeBron James. If he is, you know, because in my mind, he was the MVP the first two months of the season. It's, it's easy to forget that now because he was so bad in January. But when James Harden got hurt and went down with that hamstring injury and was going to be out for a while around Christmas time, the Cleveland Cavs and, and LeBron were right there. He was headed towards his fifth MVP. And I, st- and I will submit that over this last four games, he's been back to that player. If they have the MVP, if they have MVP LeBron James playing for them night in and night out in the playoffs, they will win the East as long as they don't have catastrophic injuries. Based on what you were seeing from LeBron in terms of how he had checked out, when you say he had checked out, I mean, that was pretty much spelling doom for Cleveland. This man looked like it was the end of his reign in Cleveland, that he was going to leave at the end of this season, right? That's what you're saying? I mean, you don't think I'm out of, I'm out of line there, right? I no, mean, I that's what you I don't believe too. You. I don't believe you're out of line, not at all. I think that it looked that bad. I'm saying it didn't look that bad to you. If they had not done a deal, if they, especially if they had not taken some guys off this team, regardless of what they added, I think we'd have been talking today about the last days of LeBron in Cleveland. They did a deal, and I think it's completely re- reopened the future. When you say the possibility was there for him to leave. Let's just hype, speak hypothetically for a quick second, Brian Windows. When we talk about hypothetically LeBron James moving on, if it were not in Cleveland, we've heard Houston, we've heard L.A. You know, what, what are your thoughts? I mean, you even have people bringing up, uh, could he possibly decide that he wants to go back to Miami? If, if, if LeBron were not in Cleveland, where would you be fearful or, 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 or watchful for where he would end up? See, this is the big issue, Stephen A., because I don't know if any place made great sense for him. And this is why there were people in the league, executives that I talked to, even an owner that I talked to, who said, if I was Dan Gilbert, I would call LeBron's bluff. I would put him on blast and say, I'm not going to add to this team unless you commit to me. I'm not going to bring more salary on in the future unless I know that it's going to be around you. I'm not going to get complimentary players to you unless I know you're going to be here because they didn't believe that LeBron had a legitimate place to go. Yes, he would be happy playing in L.A., but this Lakers team is not ready for him yet. Yes, he would potentially be happy. Uh, you know, he, he'd be interesting alongside those stars in Houston, but the, the, the finances don't work, and how do you share the ball with James Harden, and how do you share the ball with Chris Paul? Like, yes, San Antonio will be interesting, but we don't know Kawhi Leonard's health. Philadelphia, he and Ben Simmons are too much alike. Um, Miami, they have no salary cap space. The, the Cavs wouldn't be, uh, you know, I, I could throw a roadblock in front of every. And so there were people out there who said LeBron James should, should call, Dan, uh, Dan Gilbert should call LeBron's bluff. And I'm not so sure what would have happened if Dan did that. I think Dan would have ultimately looked bad because it would have looked bad putting his player, shoving him to the door. And eventually he took the position that he did. But I'm going to be honest with you. I don't see a glorious uh, other alternative for LeBron right now. That said, we know things change in the NBA. We know that Daryl Morey has some secret plan that he's going to unload to try to get him. We don't know how things will happen. We don't know how the Thunder season will end and how that will affect Paul George. So I, I look out there, I don't see a great other option for LeBron right now. But I also recognize that those things can change. All-star festivities are right here in L.A., Brian went to us this weekend. Uh, what do you foresee for the Los Angeles Lakers based on the moves they made? Well, I think it's, it's easy to tear a house down. 
and they've torn the house down. They've cleared the decks. Um, it's, a, it's an accomplishment to tear the house down, but it's much easier to tear it down than it is to build it up. So they've done a good job of opening up all possibilities. And if the Cavs season goes sideways and the Thunder season goes sideways, they have opened up the possibility that they could get Paul George and LeBron James. Having said that, they they really didn't look like they had three consecutive number two picks. And what they really needed to do was hit a grand slam on one of those. They needed to get a Ben Simmons. They needed to get a Donovan Mitchell. They needed to get a Joel Embiid. They needed to get somebody that somebody would be dying to come here to L.A. to play with. Now, Rob Palenka and Matthew Johnson are very high on Brandon Ingram, and they think that Lonzo Ball is going to be a, a great player for a long time. Did they but say great? Please, did they say great when it comes to Lonzo? Well, because I'm not so they sure they said that. All right. Here, let's put it this way. If you're Paul George or LeBron James, you're coming to the Lakers because you want to live in L.A. You're yeah. not coming to the Lakers because there's a player that you want to die to play with. Had they hit had they hit on, had they hit big on one of those number two picks and they had the rookie of the year or they had a guy like he was going to be a 15-year all-star sitting here with that cap space, I think we'd look at it completely differently. What about the notion that LeBron James is going to have a hard time getting somebody new to come to Cleveland, uh, but, you know, other teams might have a chance at getting another star? Like, for example, if you're Houston, you might not get LeBron, but who's to say you might not get Paul George or somebody else? Who's to say you might not get a, a marquee or a close-to-marquee player in Houston if you can't get LeBron James? What about that notion? That is why the Kyrie Irving-LeBron breakup was such a dramatic wrench to throw into this, because... Nothing is impossible, but it's highly unlikely that the Cavs are going to be able to get that type of player. Now, I say that, who's to say they don't hop up in the lottery, get one, two, or three, and end up drafting a guy that becomes a type of star that LeBron envisions playing the last act of his career alongside with? Uh, Who's to say that a player doesn't announce in June, hey, trade me to, to Cleveland, I want to be with LeBron? But that said, that's why, because even as good as the Cavs are right now, and as, as much as they've improved, they're still sitting here as a lesser talented team than they were, especially two years ago and even last year. Their, their second best player is an all-star, Kevin Love. He's really good, but he was their third best player a year ago. There has been a downgrade in premium talent in Cleveland. And, you know, you can bring people on here who would fight me and say uh, high-level role players can make up for that. And I wouldn't necessarily go to war over that. that. That's probably true. But they lost a superstar, and they haven't replaced them. And, and that may end up defining this Cavs season when you're all said and done. Brian Wendos, appreciate you, buddy. Great work as always. We'll talk Thank soon. Thank you, Stephen right? A. Have a good Take week. Take it easy. Happy, Hall- uh, happy Valentine's Day to you and your lovely wife. You too. All right. Thank Brian you. Brian Wendos right here with Stephen A. ESPN Radio. 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. Up next, the love doctor pays a visit for the last time this week on Valentine's Day. Don't touch that dial. Stick around. It's Stephen A. ESPN Radio. Hello. I'd like to deposit this to checking. Fate is a fickle master. What? The future is uncertain. Okay. And what's my account balance? Ah, oh, the horizon is cloudy. I see a long, treacherous voyage um, filled with great peril. Look, can I just get a deposit slip or something? A fortune bank teller. Surprising. What's not surprising? How much you could save by switching to Geico. I see a yellow-eyed serpent what? and a low APR. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. From now, hour number two of the Stephen A. Smith Show here with you on ESPN Radio. 250-plus markets throughout the United States of America. And, of course, ESPN Radio, Sirius XM style, Channel 80. Number to call up as always is 888-SAY-ESPN. That's 888-729-3776. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive's Home Insurance. Get your quote at Progressive.com today. Looking at the screen right now, Rockets on a nine-game winning streak. James Harden clearly the MVP front runner. There is no doubt about that, but there are interesting and compelling NBA storylines all over the place, and who better to talk to about it than my buddy, NBA reporter and analyst and insider, the one and only Brian Windhorse. He should be on the line with us right now. Brian, are you there? Yes, Stephen A. Hello. How are you, buddy? How's everything? Good. We saw each other for two seconds about right. two hours I, ago. I, I have to. I, I, you know, I have to put you on the spot. Uh, uh, you are married, is that not correct? That's right. It's Valentine's Day, right? That's right. 
All right. How is it? Because I'm not married. I wouldn't know this. How is it for a married man to be working on Valentine's Day, particularly if you have to be on the road as opposed to home? Is that a good day Uh, for you, sir? Are you ready for the answer? Yes, I am. The answer is my wife is in Los Angeles with me right now. Excuse me. That's why he's Brian Wintors. That's why he's Brian Wintors, ladies and gentlemen. Right here with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. Big Mac Daddy, I hear you, bro. I hear you. Let's get, let's, let's get into some NBA stuff right here. This trade that, that Kobe Altman pulled off. I don't want to hear stuff about LeBron being the MVP. As far as I'm concerned, Kobe Altman might be the MVP with the, with the heist he pulled off. Not really a heist, but you know what I'm saying. How do you feel watching the Cavaliers over the three games they've played since this trade has taken place? All right, a couple levels here. First off, they made a, more than just the trades for the players. They traded for and engaged LeBron James back, which is the biggest acquisition that they made. And you want the, the, where, where the line goes, before last Wednesday's game against the Tim, Timberwolves at home, they're playing on a back-to-back. They'd lost eight straight games on national television. The Wolves had a couple of days off. LeBron comes out, has a triple-double. They told him before the game, LeBron, we're going to make some trades tomorrow. Since that happened forward, LeBron's averaging 30 points, 13 assists, 9 rebounds, shooting 55%. That was what they needed. They needed to get LeBron reengaged. Secondly, you know, Kobe, and in my mind, fairly, it may not have all been his fault, but he was sitting in the chair. He wasn't able to execute a couple of different Paul George trades last summer. Now, Maybe it wasn't his fault. Maybe it was the fact that he was interim. Maybe it was the fact that another team pulled out. Maybe it was just all kinds of other details. Or that LeBron would, or that LeBron wouldn't commit to staying, which is what Dan Gilbert wanted him to do. That had something to do with it, too. Sure. For sure. There were a lot of things. But at the end of the day, he wasn't able to execute a Paul George trade, and the trade that he made wasn't looking so good. So for him to come out and be able to execute these trades under pressure, and I think they these are pretty secretly hedging trades. Not only did the Cavs get better today, but they got younger and they got and they kept the Brooklyn pick so that they'll still add another piece so that it's even LeBron, even if LeBron walks away this summer. Now, so this team's not going to be a competitor with these guys, but at least they have a basis of players to rebuild, to start a rebuild with. Had they made a trade for a guy like DeAndre Jordan, who's in the last year of his contract, who might have walked away, or older players that they couldn't use, he was able to sort of hedge. It's a really artful hedge, but he hedged with these deals, regardless of what LeBron does this summer. Mm. Brian Winters right here with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. So seeing what you have seen, what do you think about the Cleveland Cavaliers now compared to what you were witnessing last week? I think they've got a a, a decent chance to win the East. And a a week ago, I thought they would have struggled to get out of the sector. A decent chance? I kind of think it's going to be a cakewalk, Brian, to believe it or not, because I think that the young fresh legs gives them the depth that they need and elevates them defensively. I don't know who can deal with them in the East. Well, I do think that you're right, that if you look at this team over the last four years, they kept getting older and older and older with all their moves. Last night, when they went down the stretch of the game to win that game, they had three 25-year-olds on the court. LeBron hasn't shared the court in the fourth quarter with three 25-year-olds like in like eight or ten years. I'm not even kidding. So they definitely got younger. But I, let's not overreact to two games. And also, I think we we owe some respect to the Toronto Raptors, who are playing – not only tremendous basketball, but they're 24-4 and four at home, and they're in position to get the number one seed. And the Cavs will potentially have to start a series with the Celtics on the road with young players and a series with the Raptors on the road. So I think they've got a good chance, uh, but you know they're going to have to reintegrate Kevin Love in about a month or so here. So let's, let's see how things go. I'm not ready to hand it back to him just yet. You know, but an interesting part, and we're talking to Brian Winters right here with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio, watching them last night against Oklahoma City. I'm thinking about the fact that on the court was LeBron James, Jeff Green, Larry Nance Jr., Jordan Clarkson, and J.R. Smith. Now, obviously, J.R. Smith ain't going to continue to shoot the way that he's been shooting, but it's a credit to him that he's been shooting as well as he's been shooting. They look faster on defense. you got Larry Nance being able to defend in the pick-and-roll situations on the perimeter. I think ultimately their defense is elevated, and that's why I'm excited about what I'm seeing from them. Combine that with Boston's lack of depth, Toronto with DeRozan and Larry not proving themselves in the postseason, and the rest of the Eastern Conference being so highly questionable. I'm not saying that the Cavs have the East on lock, 
because they're so great. I'm saying it's virtually by default because no one is really that, that good come postseason time. To that you say what, Brian? I say LeBron's not going to lose sleep about going to Boston or Toronto. You're right. And even though I don't want to make too much of a game in February, the Cavs blowing uh, Boston out the other day had a lot of currency for them because they know if they have to start a series in Boston in the second round, they're not going to be afraid to go into that building. And LeBron's not afraid of the Raptors. He's owned them in the playoffs the last two years, even though the teams have changed dramatically. So I agree with that. But I still say – the most important thing is is an engaged LeBron James. If he is, you know, because in my mind he was the MVP the first two months of the season. It's it's easy to forget that now because he was so bad in January. But when James Harden got hurt and went down with that hamstring injury and was going to be out for a while around Christmas time, the Cleveland Cavs and and LeBron were right there. He was headed towards his fifth MVP, and I still and I will submit that over this last four games. He's been back to that player. If they have the MVP, if they have MVP LeBron James playing for them night in and night out in the playoffs, they will win the East as long as they don't have catastrophic injuries. Based on what you were seeing from LeBron in terms of how he had checked out, when you say he had checked out, I mean, that was pretty much spelling doom for Cleveland. This man looked like it was the end of his reign in Cleveland, that he was going to leave at the end of this season, right? That's what you're saying? I mean, you don't think I'm out of I'm out of line there, right? I no, mean, I don't. That's what I don't believe too. I don't believe you're out of line, not at all. I think that it looked that bad. I'm saying that it looked that bad to you. If they had not done a deal, if they, especially if they had not taken some guys off this team, regardless of what they added, I think we'd have been talking today about the last days of LeBron in Cleveland. They did a deal, and I think it's completely re- reopened the future. When you say the possibility was there for him to leave. Let's just hype, speak hypothetically for a quick second, Brian Windows. When we talk about hypothetically LeBron James moving on, if it were not in Cleveland, we've heard Houston, we've heard L.A. You know, what, what are your thoughts? I mean, you even have people bringing up, uh, could he possibly decide that he wants to go back to Miami? If, if, if LeBron were not in Cleveland, where would you be fearful or, 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 or watchful for where he would end up? See, this is a big issue, Stephen A., because I don't know if any place made great sense for him. And this is why there were people in the league, executives that I talked to, even an owner that I talked to, who said, if I was Dan Gilbert, I would call LeBron's bluff. I would put him on blast and say, I'm not going to add to this team unless you commit to me. I'm not going to bring more salary on in the future unless I know that it's going to be around you. I'm not going to get complimentary players to you unless I know you're going to be here because they didn't believe that LeBron had a legitimate place to go. Yes, he would be happy playing in L.A. But this Lakers team is not ready for him yet. Yes, he would potentially be happy. Uh, you know, he, he'd be interesting alongside those stars in Houston, but the, the, the finances don't work. And how do you share the ball with James Harden? And how do you share the ball with Chris Paul? Like, yes, San Antonio will be interesting, but we don't know Kawhi Leonard's health. Philadelphia, he and Ben Simmons are too much alike. Um, Miami, they have no salary cap space. The, the Cavs wouldn't be, uh, you know, I, I could throw a roadblock in front of every. And so there were people out there who said LeBron James should should call, Dan, uh, Dan Gilbert should call LeBron's bluff. And I'm not so sure what would have happened if Dan did that. I think Dan would have ultimately looked bad because it would have looked bad putting his player, shoving him to the door. And eventually he took the position that he did. But I'm going to be honest with you. I don't see a glorious uh, other alternative for LeBron right now. That said, we know things change in the NBA. We know that Daryl Morey has some secret plan that he's going to unload to try to get him. We don't know how things will happen. We don't know how the Thunder season will end and how that will affect Paul George. So I, I look out there, I don't see a great other option for LeBron right now. But I also recognize that those things can change. All-star festivities are right here in L.A., Brian went to us this weekend. Uh, what do you foresee for the Los Angeles Lakers based on the moves they made? Well, I think it's it's easy to tear a house down. And they've torn the house down. They've cleared the decks. Um, it's, a, it's an accomplishment to tear the house down, but it's much easier to tear it down than it is to build it up. So they've done a good job of opening up all possibilities. And if the Cavs season goes sideways, and the Thunder season goes sideways, they have opened up the possibility that they could get Paul George and LeBron James. Having said that, they they really didn't look like they had three consecutive number two picks. 
And what they really needed to do was hit a grand slam on one of those. They needed to get a Ben Simmons. They needed to get a Donovan Mitchell. They needed to get a Joel Embiid. They needed to get somebody that somebody would be dying to come here to L.A. to play with. Now, Rob Palenka and Magic Johnson are very high on Brandon Ingram, and they think that Lonzo Ball is going to be a, a great player for a long time. Did they, say great? Did they say great when it comes to Lonzo? Because well, I'm not so they sure they he's... said that. All right. Kim, put it this way. If you're Paul George or LeBron James, you're coming to the Lakers because you want to live in L.A. You're not coming to the Lakers because there's a player that you want to die to play with. Had they hit, had they hit on, had they hit big on one of those number two picks, and they had the rookie of the year, or they had a guy that looked like he was going to be a 15 year All Star sitting here with that cap space, I think we'd look at it completely differently. What about the notion that LeBron James is going to have a hard time getting somebody new to come to Cleveland, uh, but you know, other teams might have a chance at getting another star. Like, for example, if you're Houston, you might not get LeBron, but who's to say you might not get Paul George or somebody else? Who's to say you might not get a, a marquee or a close-to-marquee player in Houston if you can't get LeBron James? What about that notion? That is why the Kyrie Irving-LeBron breakup was such a dramatic wrench to throw into this because – Nothing is impossible, but it's highly unlikely that the Cavs are going to be able to get that type of player. Now, I say that, who's to say they don't hop up in the lottery, get one, two, or three, and end up drafting a guy that becomes a type of star that LeBron envisions playing the last act of his career alongside with? Uh, Who's to say that a player doesn't announce in June, hey, trade me to, to Cleveland, I want to be with LeBron? But that said, that's why, because even as good as the Cavs are right now, and as, as much as they've improved, they're still sitting here as a lesser talented team than they were, especially two years ago and even last year. Their, their second best player is an all star, Kevin Love. He's really good, but he was their third best player a year ago. There has been a downgrade in premium talent in Cleveland. And, you know, you could bring people on here who would fight me and say uh, high level role players can make up for that. And I wouldn't necessarily go to war over that. That That's probably true. But they lost a superstar, and they haven't replaced them. And and that may end up defining this Cavs season when you're all said and done. Brian Wintos, appreciate you, buddy. Great work as always. We'll talk Thank soon. Thank you, Stephen right. A. Have a good Take week. Take it easy. Happy, Hall- uh, happy Valentine's Day to you and your lovely wife. You too. Right. Thank you. Brian Wintos right here with Stephen A. ESPN Radio. 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. Up next, the love doctor pays a visit. For the last time this week on Valentine's Day. Don't touch that dial. Stick around. It's Stephen A. ESPN Radio. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it. This is another bad song. There's a lot of songs I could have gave. I could have suggested to that caller. A lot of them. But since he caught, put me on the spot, it's five that came to my mind. But I could have went deeper. No question. With Luther, with Teddy, the Whispers. Ooh. Mm-mm. Osley Brothers, I didn't even bring them up. By the way, surprising a friend or loved one is easy. <clears throat> Excuse me. With a dozen multicolored roses for them, 1-800-Flowers.com. Plus, when you order now, you'll get another dozen absolutely free. So to order, go to 1-800-Flowers.com slash ESPN. Plus, something else I want to remind you about. Sleep is very important. Zeep is a company that you can trust and has been around for many years. I personally met the CEO, Dr. Greenberg, and by the way, I'm a Zipa user as well. Some of you are still snoring because you don't think it's a big enough problem to solve right now. But let me tell you something. Until you get your snoring problem solved, you'll never know how good it feels to sleep without snoring. Here's what you need to do. You need to see for yourself why so many people are using Zipa. Just go to their website at Zipa.com. Please go to ZYPPH.com. If you're driving, be safe and visit the Zipa.com website later. Just remember, Zipa is happy Z spelled backwards. You hear all this talk about Zipa on, your, on our show because it really helps you sleep better. And guess what? That means it helps you feel better. And if you have someone you're sleeping next to, they'll appreciate you for getting one as well. So take a minute and visit the Zipa website to download the Zipa app and learn why. Putting an end to snoring is one of the best things in the world you can possibly do for your health. I got my little nephew on the line. His name is Corey. He's live with yours truly. Nephew, what's up, man? How are you? What's, what's happening, Uncle Steve? What, why are you calling me in the middle of my show? What do you want to talk about, sir? Um, I, I just wanted the opportunity to let your listening audience know what the love doctor has given me in order oh. to land my bride. Oh, Lord. 
Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, let me talk about right, it. You're, t- you're telling oh. on me real quick, but hurry up. Go ahead. <laughs> yes, I am. I will make it brief. Um, this was back in 96, 97, and it was me at the tender age of 17. I was infatuated with this young lady named Sasha. Yes, I will say her name. I came to you. I said, Uncle Steve, I got to have this woman. She's one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen in my life. What can I do to land her? You gave me two pieces of advice. First thing you said to me was, nephew, you're drooling. Wipe the corner of your mouth. <laughs> after that, that <laughs> after that, you told me two things. You said the foundation of a long-term relationship is with friendship. So make sure that you work your way into being her friend. And from that, the seeds of a relationship will grow. The second thing you told me is get in good with the mama. Because if you have the endorsement of the mama, it's only one way to go, and that's up. And I took that advice, and I applied it. And we're going to fast forward to 2010, and we got married. And she is now Miss Johnson. It's a beautiful thing, and I like to appreciate, and I appreciate you for what you've done for me, and I must let the people know. I got to get you. I got to throw you off this line. You're softening me up. They can't. My audience can't see me this soft like this. You're ruining my reputation. You're ruining my reputation, nephew. Love you, boy. Goodbye. It. Take it easy. We got to go to break. He's ruining my reputation. Back with your calls to close out the show in a minute. It's Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. And yes, I'm not that soft. Not that soft. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it. Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. Before we get on out of here today, I'm going to take a few callers, but I also wanted to play some sound yesterday. Remember the idea, uh, the story about the Boston PD just electing the honorette Arbach instead of an African-American for Black History Month before pulling the tweet down? Well, on TNT last night, very interesting discussion took place. Isaiah Thomas, Baron Davis, Chris Weber, Shaquille O'Neal. But I was very interested in what Isaiah Thomas had to say. And even though I'm not going to elaborate on it too extensively, I wanted you all to hear what a Hall of Famer, former bad boy Piston, two-time champion, Isaiah Thomas had to say on the subject of Red Arbach being honored by the Boston Police Department and what he peeled from it. Listen to him. In 1966... Red Arback stood up and said, Bill Russell will be the player coach of the Boston Celtics in 1966. 68, Kennedy's assassinated. 69, Fred Hampton's assassinated. And in 1974, that's when we started integrating public schools in the United States, and particularly in Boston. Think about that. So Red Arback and Bill Russell are tied at the hip together in history. So you can't honor Bill Russell without honoring Red Arback for what he stood for in the 60s in this country. Race is not a biological construct. I mean, it's not biological. It's social and cultural. Greg Popovich and Red Arback as men did not buy into the construct of race. They looked at all of us as human beings. And when we deal from a human standpoint, not from a racial standpoint, but just from a human standpoint, then we are all equal. There's no black. There's no white. Very, very profound statement. Very profound words by Isaiah Thomas, who's absolutely right. He and I talked about it this morning. I'm going to talk to him about it on this on this very radio show sometime next week. The only thing that I want to say is this, while I completely and totally agree with him and from a factual and scientific perspective, he's absolutely positively right on the money and his words need to be inhaled and absorbed with the legitimacy it deserves, along with that of Dr. Harry Edwards, who Chris Weber uh, uh, told us that he had spoken to and had educated him on the subject as well. Here's my only issue with. Everything everybody had to say, including the great Dr. Harry Edwards, who I talk to quite often and who I I revere with the utmost respect. That wasn't the Boston PD's intent. 
The reality of the situation is that Black History Month in this country exists because of the needs pertaining to the African-American community and the lack of recognition those of us emanating from this community have failed to receive by a, a country and a system that has historically minimized us. Red Arbach, who doesn't know he's great and who doesn't know why? Greg Popovich, who doesn't know he's great and who doesn't know why? Nobody's saying that you minimize anything that they've done. What we're saying is they're constantly elevated, deservedly so. But on too many occasions, black folks who deserve to be admired and revered and respected and recognized for their contribution to the fabric of this country and all that it has become has been shortchanged. Black History Month was an opportunity to address those very issues and concerns and to eradicate it if at all possible. So anybody who chooses Black History Month to honor someone white, in my opinion, is missing it. Isaiah Thomas has educated me on many occasions far more than I could ever hope to educate him. He's still in school and goes to Berkeley and does dissertations and things of that nature. Dr. Harry Edwards, please. He's forgotten more than I'll ever know about history. And Chris Weber, Shaquille O'Neal, Baron Davis and Isaiah have done and continue to do a wonderful job as, as do all my boys on TNT. But in this particular instance, as profound and correct as Isaiah Thomas's words are, I respectfully disagree with what Boston's PD did because that wasn't their intent. That wasn't their agenda. Black History Month is a time to honor African-Americans, not those who helped benefit African-Americans. That might be just my opinion, but I think I got a lot of company in that regard. In that regard, talk to y'all twenty-two hours from now. Until then, peace and love. That's just a sample of what you'll hear on the Stephen A. Smith Show weekdays at one p.m. Eastern on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app.